Buongiorno, my friends, and welcome to another video. Today, we are going to be looking in Lightroom Classic, one of my favorite Adobe softwares, the one that I use to edit pretty much every photo. I use it to get the photo to about 90% of the way there, and then we jump over to Photoshop to do the bad boy wizard work. Anyway, we're going to cut to the chase. In this video, I'm going to be covering over 11 Lightroom Classic editing tips that you will not know about. I guarantee you do not know all 11. If you do know all 11, then you are a, a wizard but you won't all 11. Anyway, let's get straight into it. The first tip is using something called point color, which is in the HSL section. So you can see here, when we come to the color mixer section, we have made a lot of adjustments to the HSLs of this photo. If you see, we turn it off and on, there's a lot of change here, but there's this section here called point color. And what we can do here is with this dropper, we can come to the image and we can select an exact hue of a color and then we can see it here and we can make adjustments from here. So we basically get another generation of the HSL sliders. You can see we've got hue, saturation and luminance right there. And then we can go ahead and make further minute adjustments to that area on the image. You have full control over this. You can see that if we want to move and change the hue there, we get an accurate representation above of everything that we are doing to this color. So we're increasing the saturation, the point is going up, increasing the luminance, this is going up. That actually looks grim, so I'm just gonna undo that. But you can see this little bump of luminance here makes the picture just look a lot better already. And we've done that by just picking out and isolating that exact color. Number two, and I'm sure that you knew a lot of these are coming up, but Adobe is obviously absolutely hammering the AI at the moment. I was recently just at Adobe Max and the stuff that they are bringing out is I'm gonna be doing a load of videos on it, so don't worry. But anyway, number two is AID noise. As you can see, this photo that I took in Bali, the shadows are very underexposed. I originally shot it like this, so there's quite a lot of noise in there. So if we come down to the detail panel and we see we have a denoise button. Just click that, let the enhance thing do its work. It takes a while to load in. Uh, and then I recommend zooming to a different place on the photo so you can see exactly what you are changing here. So let's just set it to the shadows and you can see the noise in there. Um, not ideal. So we are gonna just remove it. I mean, you can adjust the settings up here as well, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna give it a whack at 50 uh, and see how it goes. But look at all the noise, like damn, it's all over the place. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep it at 50 and let's hit enhance. Let it do its work. As you see in the top left, it's loading in there. If we zoom in, look how clean that is. It's actually crazy how good this thing is. This feature I'm sure used to be like, give you really wavy kind of results, but this result is so clean. So if you've been on a shoot and you've bumped up the ISO to capture some details, do not worry anymore. The AI wizards at Adobe can just denoise it in one click. Okay, tip number three is composition is one of the most important parts of photography and you can actually change your composition overlay in Lightroom by coming to the crop section. If you come here and you can see this beautiful photo of my friend Sophie and with this selected, you'll see that it defaults to the rule of thirds, which is a very common one. I always recommend the beginners get used to the rule of thirds just because it's the easiest one. But if we press the O key, you can see we start to cycle through all of the different composition overlays available on Lightroom. And you can see there, if we come to this crop, it's got four by five automatically built in, which is the Instagram crop. Very useful if you're doing the photography specifically for Instagram, but you can just cycle through to whichever composition best fits your image and then adjust it from there. I really like this one for this image because it really matches the movement of Sophie's body and it just works well on the photo. Okay, tip number four, and one of my personal favorites, I use this all the time, but if you come into the masking section here, you can see if we add another mask, I already have some adjustments on because this is a photo that I was editing earlier. If you click the plus thing here, I'm just gonna do it again for the sake of this video, you have the select people option. Now, the masking capabilities of Lightroom are freaking crazy at the moment. Like it, it's just, it's getting better and better. It's getting easier and easier to edit. It's making our lives much easier as editors. We used to have to manually brush this stuff in. Now it just automatically does it. And you can see that it's selected the person in the image. So when you click that and select, you can either have the option of, of selecting the entire person 
or you can go through the individual parts of the image and select different sections. Look at that, iris, pupil, eye, sclera. I didn't even know what a sclera was until I read this mask. Uh, but look at that, red eye vibes, that's not nice. <laughs> We're gonna get rid of that. Anyway, you can go through and you can make particular selections on different parts of the image. The ones that I always do, as you can see that I have done on here, is I make selections all over the human and I, I change the hair and everything like that just because the color of the hair can often change when you're editing an image. Uh, and the colors of the image might be good, but then the hair, it doesn't look too great. So you just add a mask. Like you can see if I turn off all the masks that I did in this photo, you can see before and after. It makes a big difference. It makes a big difference to the photo. So that is Lightroom's masking capabilities on a human. Now, the next one I'm gonna show you is when you first open Lightroom as a beginner, your sidebar will default to this size. Now, this is the simplest trick on this whole YouTube video, but all you do is drag this out because now you have so much more room to play with on this slider. Like if we go back to where it was before, those tiny movements are just doing so much more. Whereas if you just drag this slider out, you have, all, you have much more control over the minute adjustments in your image. Very simple one, but an essential for Lightroom beginners. Okay, and next up, and tip number six is to compare your photo against a black background. We can all get a little bit trigger happy when we're editing a photo. It, it's normal, it's natural, it's part of the process, especially when you're early on in your journey. And we can, you know, go color puke and we can add too much vibrancy and too much saturation, but a good thing to do always is compare it against a black background. So if you hit L on your key, it will dim the whole of the dashboard. If you hit L again, you'll see it against a black background. Background. And we just get an, a more accurate representation of what the colors look like when we see it against a black background because there's no glare getting in the way of it uh, and we can really see what we are working with. So the next tip links kind of to the last tip, but this is called comparing your image to where you started. Now there are a couple of ways to do this, but when I'm going through the image editing process, I quite like this look here, but I wanna see where it's come from and I wanna see both versions of it, the before and the after. So if I come here and I click on the compare button, you'll see that I get a before and after in the same view. So I can literally see the changes that I've made to this image and I can cycle through the different views to really see the before and afters next to each other in real time. I really like this edit that I did. Um, I, I developed this preset literally just for this image because it was already so blown out anyway, but you can see like the light rays coming through. If I go to the before of this, this was the before. So this is the image that I started with. Uh, and you can see these light rays coming through in this haze and it looked biblical. Um, it was mad, like a really cool, look at the sun up there. Uh, and I wanted to create a film kind of glow look to this because I wanted to make it into a title screen. So this is the preset that I made of it uh, using that, that kind of like filmic look. You can see there's a hell of a lot of grain in there. We've got a bit of fuzziness around the details in there just to really show this kind of biblical but vintage look. And I wanted to do this because I turned it into the title, like I said, which was this one, which I did in Photoshop. Uh, and I just think it looks really, really cool. Like Yosemite there, sampled the color from the lighter shadows here and just made this a nice title screen. Now that could be an iPhone wallpaper background. Uh, it could be anything, it could be a poster. I, I love doing this with text effects and typography in there, but that's why I developed this preset. It's also, I just added this preset to my preset pack version 2.0. The link for that is down in the bio if you guys wanna pick that up. But yeah, I really like this color grade because you've got the heat in the top here and then we've just got these beautiful, cool shadows and the typography. You're so many baby. Can't go wrong there. Okay, so tip number eight is another way to straighten your image. Nothing looks more amateur in a photo than a wonky horizon. Just never fall for that, please. So always make sure the horizon or the thing that is governing the straightness of your photo, I don't know if that's the proper way to describe it, but that's how we're gonna say it anyway. So just for the sake of this video, let's say that this was slightly off and was a bit wonky when I've shot it. So I've shot it like, say I've shot it like that. As you can see, the buildings are governing the straightness of this photo. <laughs> I'm gonna make that stick. But anyway, the buildings here should be straight. So what we wanna do is come back to the crop section and you can see we have this ruler. Uh, what you do is find something in the image which should be straight, like this drain pipe over here, and just drag a down like that in a straight line to make that straight across it, and click it, let go, and it will snap into place, and now the photo 
is straight. Like I say, nothing more amateur than a wonky horizon. So, so either you can go on vertical lines like that or horizontal lines. Whatever should be straight in the photo, use that as your guide and use that to snap it into place. Okay, next up as well, I'm just gonna reset the preset of this photo because I'm gonna use one of my presets on it again. Link for the preset pack is down below, baby. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use my cinematic teal and orange because I know that I made this preset from this photo and I think that looks great. But say for, for example, we didn't want that much in it and it was just a bit too much, we can lower the intensity of this by just using the preset slider here. So you can use the preset slider to basically just add or take away as much of the preset as you want. If it doesn't fit in one click, then try adjust it from there until you get to a place where you're happy with the image. So the next tip is something called AI Lens Blur. Once again, the Adobe wizards are flying into the realms of AI and they are absolutely killing it. So come down here onto the image that you have selected and select Lens Blur. And if you just hit apply, it will analyze the image, it will find the subject in there and it will automatically mask around that and it will start to blur the image if we just wait whilst it's analyzing analyzing bang and you can see already that has made the photo way better like fair enough like fair play look if we turn that off and on wait for it if we turn that off and then back on you can see the amount of depth it's created which is really nice and you can even then go and adjust the depth if you wanted to to change it to a different point of focus on the image. I mean, we wouldn't want to do that with this photo uh, just because we want it where we are right now. But already that's made such a cool difference to this image. You can even come onto the bokeh section here. And if you wanted to, if there was more lights in the background, you can change the style of bokeh. That's more so I reckon a night photo when there's a lot more lights in the background because then you'll get a specific kind of bokeh, but you get the idea. You can change it to exactly what you like here. Uh, artificially using AI. I mean, this is crazy. Editing in 2024 is just wild. Like, wait until you see what Photoshop's gonna be doing, guys. Like, woo, this is nuts. But anyway, that's lens blur and it's pretty spicy. And then lastly, tip number 11 is to check your clipping mask. So sometimes, let's say for example, if this photo was much more underexposed like this, what we can do is we can add something called a clipping mask over so we can see the parts of the images which have lost all details. If we hit J on the keyboard, you will start to see, if I just lower the exposure even more, all these areas appear here. So the blue areas means that this place is totally underexposed and we have lost all detail in this area. So if you've underexposed an image or you're editing an image, then you can check to see if there are any areas that you are clipping. Uh, and it also works in the reverse way if we were to lift it up and all the red sections means it's overexposed. Now, this is to be taken within reason because sometimes you will have clipping in an image and it will be there for a stylistic effect. Like if you're shooting into a sun, uh, then obviously you're gonna have very bright highlights and whites and it will be blown out uh, and it can look good, especially if you're doing things like silhouette photography, you know, you'll have clipped areas with black and white. That's just how it's gonna be, but it'll look good. So this is to be taken with a pinch of salt uh, and depending on the style of photography that you want to be doing. Uh, so yeah, just hit J and you'll see these two little keys will turn on in the top. So if you're clipping, then they will be highlighted like that. And if you're not, then they won't. And everything in your image, the detail is in, baby. But there you go, Meza Means. That is 11 Lightroom classic editing hacks that you need to try out in 2024. Lightroom is just getting better and better. It's literally, it's getting easier and easier to edit. If you want some Lightroom presets so that you can one click edit your photos, then mine are in the link down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Drop a comment which was your favorite uh, Lightroom editing tip. Subscribe if you aren't already Meza Means, and I shall see you in the next one. Au revoir.